So in this video, we're going to be finishing off our calculator and we're going to be allowing you to assign variables, retrieve variables, and use variables in your expressions. So the way we do that is we scroll up, we can see that assigning a variable, we give it the equals operator. So we need to be able to work with that in our run function. So we say if p0 is equal to equals, which means we're assigning a variable. So the way we'll implement variables is we'll create a global variable called env and it's going to be equal to a dictionary in Python, which is an associative array in any other language. And we're going to just make it a global variable that we can use in this function. So we'll say global env. Then what we'll do is we will say env and we will pass it the key, which in this case is going to be the variable's name, which is p1. Uh, and then the value is going to be the expression or should I say the, the evaluated expression. So we said p1 is the key, which is the variable's name, and the variable's value is going to be equal to run p2. And what I'll do is I will just print the environment variable out when we assign a variable. So let's just run this. Uh, let's just say 1 plus 2, whoops, 1 plus 2, that works. And we'll say a is equal to 10. And what you can see we've just done is printed out the environment which means that a is now equal to 10. If I said b is equal to 100, now we have two variables and they're both stored in our dictionary. Now what we need to do is retrieve the variables. So the way we do that is we scroll up again. You can see that retrieving a variable is when we have the word var. So in our tuple we'll say lf p0 is equal to var. Then we want to retrieve the variable, so we'll return env and we will check it is p1. So we will say return env p1, and we'll just run that. We'll say a is equal to 10. We'll say 1 plus a is equal to 11. So what we've done is retrieved that variable and added it to 1 and printed the result out. But if I say 1 plus b, which is a variable that hasn't been assigned yet, and run that, it crashes our program because there's a key error, which means the key doesn't exist, so the variable hasn't been assigned. So the way we fix that is we say if p1, which is the variable name, is not in env, which is our dictionary. We just want to return undeclared variable found. Uh, we'll say else return the variable from the, uh, from the dictionary. So we'll just run this. We'll say b, get undeclared variable found. We say a, undeclared variable, a is equal to 10. We have it stored in the environment. We say a now, we get 10 printed out. And we're just going to just delete that because we don't want the, the environment to be printed all the time. That's just for debugging. So there we have it. There is our calculator created. If I just run it one more time, we'll say 10 plus 5 times 9 divided by 2. That gives us 32.5. Just copy that. And you can see Google gives us the exact same answer. So there we have it. Our series is now finished. What we just learned is we've learned how to create a lexer, how to create a parser, how to create an abstract syntax tree, and how to walk the tree and execute the program, which is essentially what our calculator is. It's a mini interpreter that executes a, uh, really small programs that calculate numbers. So hopefully we'll be expanding on this in the future. We'll be creating hopefully a fully fledged programming language using similar methods to this. But that's it for this series. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.